I mean, already getting straight to business, right? Having a Caitlyn come on through. So looking to be able to contend with that level of 2v2 dominance down in the bot lane. That Ruler and Missing are putting forward a lot of range to play with now with the Azir as well. So for JDG, we're looking at what they're going to end up going for their solo laners. You, you have some options, right? It's kind of sad that for JDG taking away the Talia themselves, I feel like that could have been a really big pick here. Aatrox will give them some, some superiority in the top lane, especially with the Udyr taken off the table. Mm -hmm. And actually a decent amount of mid laners pinch with the fact that JDG also took away Huey in the first rotation. Yeah, I think some very interesting bans that Nico also banned away by TT. So I feel like definitely some things going on in scrims here as we've gotten some very peculiar bans or at least specific bans to a lot of these teams so far. Lucian still remaining prominent as ever in the LPL as Akali lost. Locked in for you, gal. Final pick on the blue side for JDG. Yes, played the pick once so far. It was a win. Does give them a lot of backline threat, but God, if you want to be able to prevent dashes and backline threat, that would have been the answer. I, I think I would have loved the poppy if it came through, but so far, so kind of considering their options, do end up deciding to go with the Gwen. A champion that this split has not really seen much presence or priority in the LPL whatsoever. It will be Hoya's first game on the pick so far this split but a lot of damage i mean the little shroud she has as well gonna deny people from wanting to get in the faces of the caitlin and the azir provide them space and zone control to hopefully get, get the job done for tt who haven't been able to really put together much of a season so far definitely not and kind of in the same conversation as lgd uh, honestly every win matters for them if they even want to have a hope of making it to the postseason in the LPL, but uh, against JDG, tough test ahead of them. That guy on your screen right there, Ucal, he was the saving grace last year, it felt like, for TT. I can't say the same so far this year. We got to see them try to put it together, Lyric. Yeah, we do. And I mean, for TT, it's been rough, right? They were finally able to find another win up against Ultra Prime. Then last series, they play BLG. This series, they, they yeah. play JDG. Doesn't get easy for JDG. We're looking in to come in strong. Uh, they have looked rather reliable, only lost so far being to BLG, and that was a close series. Oh, God, that was such a banging series. Oh, my goodness. But speaking of, we got to see if the uh, last part to our wonderful LPL sandwich is going to deliver just as much as that first one did and that second one, as I might be in love with TT's uh, away jerseys, but uh, we'll see if GADG feel the same way. We're getting in game one shortly. I think we got to take a little bit of time to look at the way that JDG can play this composition. We were talking a bit about that Akali coming in for Yagao, but I'm interested how TT want to approach this one to three, and especially the early game here for Big Twan. Yeah, I think a lot's going to be about enabling the Caitlyn, right? Letting the Caitlyn utilize that range advantage and put down the punishment onto Ruler Missing. We're on to the final series of the night. I know people have been waiting for this on the official stream, so let's get right into it now. Game one of JDG versus TT. Now that we're starting up here, Yigal going to be oh so Ooh. important, I feel like. The sign yeah. said happy UCAL debut. I wonder if this is like the anniversary of, of when he when he showed up. Might be. Or maybe a matchup. Maybe he first played against JDG or something. Like yeah. It is interesting. Uh but peculiar things that I want to point out. Because we've we've spent a lot of time talking about what this meta is gonna rot in the LPL. How long maybe some of those things are gonna take to come through. I do like to see one XN on this pick on the Caitlyn. But also a newer player, right? Like, he, he was a, a constant Joy Dream member for JDG's LDL squad and now up against his former organization going at it with TT this time. Yeah, going going up against the, the organization that kind of raised him. Uh, again, and he was someone who, towards the end of the last split in his first series, there was a lot of excitement for. He's had some exceptional standout moments, but they haven't been able to lead into any wins you'd expect them to be able to find some pressure early in the game though we can see yukal uh doing a lot against the akali also going for the grasp like we saw earlier in the day with the kind of more tank variant of the azir i uh, wonder if he'll follow a similar build most of jdg's frozen damage second item <laughs> yeah, but, but, yeah but most most of jdg's damage is kind of indexed into burst and backline threat i feel like yukal will be the difference maker and, and if going for things like that shuts him down it's only going to make tt's job easier 
I think a big elephant in the room is, uh, you know, we're talking so much about one side of this bot lane matchup. 1XN taking a very aggressive and uh, powerful pick into the Lucian. The other side has Ruler and Missing, uh, if not the best bot lane in the LPL. Right, definitely definitely having them up there. I think Elkin on, Jackie Love Mako, those being the big three in terms of bot lanes. A lot going to be on Missing, I think, to be able to connect the bubble for them to be able to find an advantageous trade onto 1XN. With him having the range advantage and also having the, the fleet and the movement speed to give yeah. him that, he's going to have a lot of tools to be able to dodge out on it. Kanavi right now having the faster clear speed, it looks like, at least in the jungle pathing down towards this bottom side. We know that's where these guys are, you know, foaming at the mouth to get to. Yeah, and both junglers already being incredibly close. There is a, a Warden Tribrush for TT's bot lane, so assuming that one doesn't time out and you know, the next however many seconds, it will be hard for any avenue to be opened up for a bot lane gank. Another interesting uh, re-addition to the league, Flandre having made a big splash, I feel like, back into the league, back here, uh, I guess, being a pilot for JDG in the, uh, the top lane and actually having a lot of really impressive performances for a guy that wasn't on a team last year. I think there was a lot of question marks on how Flandre would look coming back into the league this year. Uh, and he kind of just looks like the the ever expected flan trail of we'll play weak side we'll get dove over and over again like we saw against we when we were picked the yone but still can hold up just fine can still find impact in fights is i'm getting tense Mazel. yeah uh, kanavi's going in it wasn't one to three but it is level four here and now betuan needs to take an angle has to flash out of that shuriken flip that would have been a trouble not expecting the engage to come through from Kanadi. Gets the Conqueror stacked up quickly, and the threat from Yagao Shuriken means he has to flash. And now look, it means some counter junglers co coming through from Kanadi, stealing away the Raptors, getting a ward down, so you're going to have even more information on what's going through in the top side. That's why TT need to lean even heavier into the saving grace of their bot lane matchup. Oh, you cow, that's a very tough position to be in. Kanavi will force the flash out of the mid laner of TT. And Kanavi's been having a really interesting split in my mind. Because I think especially when you look back to spring of last year, he was probably the weakest link on JDG. Like, if they did have tough moments, a lot of it was based off him. This split, he has had some, like, Omega carry performances. Hasn't had anywhere near as many downsides. Has still had some. I think uh, when he when he helped uh, Bin with the Darius and kind of started getting that going yeah. in that series, it was a bit rough. But point is, I feel like the highs have been much higher this split for Tanavi. And the thing is, this... I mean, I'm not going to lie. This guy is the pillar at which JDG is built around. Like, we've exactly. seen pieces come and go, but Kanavi is perpetually the man for JDG. I mean, he's he's never known another home, right? Like, sure, he was part of the Griffin organization yeah. early on, but never played for them. Immediately got loaned out to JDG. So we have very few, I think, faces of teams left with, with all the movement around, right? People like Mako, mm -hmm. Knight, Xiaohu. But Kanavi has been one of these forces who have stayed on JDG and, and been the foundation that they're built on. Since 2020. My God. And the fact that we're seeing so many resurgences of our legendary players, it, it's just incredible. And then we're also seeing so many rookies just playing out of their freaking minds. And it's just such a good duality, I feel like, for a league that has so many teams, so many different storylines, that we can have so it, many different little it, ones. It just makes me happy, especially with the gal being back, because there's still some players that look at. Whenever I see Shahu, I think RNG. Anytime yeah. I see Knight, I think I think TES. So I'm glad now you gal's back. Kanavi's always been here. I can just keep looking at them and thinking <laughs> of JDG. We have so many people going to new homes, but so many other people returning to homes once lost, it feels like, yeah. which is so crazy to me. Yeah, I mean, again, Mako, I'm going to, every time I see Mako, I'm going to keep yep. thinking EDG. It's just, it's just how it's going to go for a while. I, uh, I definitely am interested in how uh, the postseason is going to be looking with all these new faces, new names, and all the storylines going through. But let's get back to this storyline here, because some of the skirmishing definitely there for JDG. They have a lot of power in this uh, early to mid game with their composition, and using that's going to be important. But do we feel like a little bit's the same for TT? Yeah, TT, it feels weird, right? Because I feel like looking based on where we're at with the drafts, uh, that TT should be set up for like a, a pretty prime time to at least be able to contest down and, and bot lane 3 v 3s getting Baytron involved, maybe looking up towards topside as well. Like your Gwen's incredibly strong, forced Slunger to buy the Hex Drinker. 
but Beitron just seems so muted since the earlier <laughs> kind of tussle he had with Kanavi. Does finally have his ult online, but so does Kanavi who's here. He does. A little bit of wind ends up becoming lightning, but uh, lightning not going to be doing too much damage this time around. They do still have pressure, though, on bottom side. Very interesting wave state for them. But uh, very, very quiet early game between these two. Oh, Speaking bubble. of quiet, I just had to say something. <laughs> Toto and once uh, one XN get actually caught pretty heavily, they will be able to trade back very heavily. But one XN, he's in some trouble. And so is Toto. It goes down first blood. To JDG. Great trading coming out from Ruler and missing that bubble, oh. especially. Oh, you gal. Oh, you gal. It's just the cleanup crew. He's <laughs> playing with them, and one XN goes down anyways. And look at the minimap. You even have Kanavi covering mid, so technically there's no no lost gold or experience. He's at least there kind of dra uh, getting on top of those. So now going to give time for you, Gao, to get back to lane. Really nice maneuvers overall from JG. They don't lose anything. Really? I mean, okay, so it's just the, the early step up there and a couple... <laughs> That oh, bubble is man. so beautiful for missing. It looked like the trade was going to be able to turn around with 1XN following up which with what looked like a really nice headshot onto Ruler. But they trade too far into, into the enemy's territory. You see how much the minions were doing oh. to 1XN when he but, went up and then Ruler finishing off. Do you also see that space gliding that missing was pulling out? Like, oh my god, get this man on an ADC. I want to see it. <laughs> like, holy cow. Uh, no, not really. But it was kind of cool as you get to see a little bit of that auto attack damage. Look at really that, though, be Zell. there. Storm Razor now picked up for Ruler That's already. Nuts. Like uh, they're gonna be able to start looking for some really aggressive trades. Ruler didn't even have to blow flash or anything like that in the previous exchange. So he has the tools to play incredibly aggressive. Give the man the tools. He's definitely gonna build some weapons. As we know, Ruler last year. I think one of the most incredible performances I've ever seen from an ADC over an entire year. That man was literally cooking all year long, and it tasted delicious. And JDG looking to recoup a little bit of that glory. Yeah, I think the best thing is I might need to pause because I'm, I'm keeping my eyes on the mini map, and Beitron's going really deep. I thought he was going to angle around four bot, but having <laughs> his eyes on Yigao. He's got the Vault Breaker over. Yukao's starting to set up with the Sand Soldiers, but Beituan not going to pull the trigger there. And meanwhile, he is losing the Chicky Nuckies on the other side. Is going to have the trade of the Krugs, too. Okay, but now you have the potential to look bot. Not a whole lot of trading has come through just far, but they might have the burst. I mean, Beituan oh, into a trap. they got to get something here because they're giving up six Krugs or Krubs across the side. Now, actually, on a Ruler, they take him out. 1XN gets him. Beautiful tower tank there. Beituan gets out by the skin of his teeth, and there we go. And I mean, this combo just works so well, right? Go with Beitron's ultimate. You can immediately put down the trap. Ruler has no way he can get out. You have enough damage between these three. So even despite the earlier mishaps, TT still enabling their bot lane quite well. I like the hold of the summoner spells there from Ruler as well. Just realizing, like, I don't know if there's any way he actually makes it out of this one. Even if all that CC comes down, that trap timing is beautiful. Yeah, it was, it was really nice. And the Q follow up from Chocho, you have Ooh, Kaelin the whole time putting off the damage. 11 oh health. God. That was close. 11 health right there. As uh, we did get first item starting to be completed for TT, showing some uh, fight back at least against JDG. We get the Storm Razor and the Leandries for the double carries of 1XN and Yukal. You also got the mandate coming out for missing, which is pretty big and, and letting Ruler play more aggressive now. JDG wanting to contest. Ooh. It's a Lich Bane completed as well for Yagao as he TPs over here. Ruler will make his way here and uh, maybe Hoya takes a bad entrance there, but Kanavi's in. Crescent Guard achieved and the dragon gotten by JDG. Yeah, bubble goes through. The nice little pushback from Yukal, but look at Yagao. He wants to put on his carry pants, but he's going to be carried right into the ground as it's a trade right back. They, it does go one for one, but still dragon secured for JDG. And yeah, I'm a, I'm a bit surprised they weren't able to find more on that, but still. Yeah, you know, you know, Mazel, yeah, nothing really going on now. I was kind of hoping Ruler and Missing would, would start pushing up, start going forward, start looking for a bit of blood. Oh, there you it is. You want blood, you shall have it. I'm trading back and forth there. We can see the mites now from the fact that JDG, of course, do have six the six scrubs because that's what Kanavi was doing when the plate Woo. earlier bot side came through. 
Ruler wants to step up there. He has the empowered auto attacks, but man, able to just get three plates here for the man himself. They do have Bei Chuan right around the corner here to respond. See if they can find anything. Missing does have his ult to try to disengage if something happens, but oh, they need to be careful. Oh. They can even they can even see that Yukal started moving down, so that's when it should confirm in their minds that Bei Chuan's there. Ooh, Navi coming on to Hoya here. He doesn't have that mist any longer. There's that three talent strike. One more kill. It actually oh. didn't hit, but Flandre will flash for it. Nice job confirming the kill. Now they're really going to be able to put those mites to good use. Sure, Hoya has DP, but 25 seconds on the death timer. It's going to be a ton of gold funneled oh into Flandre. God. They're getting so many plates. It's insane. They've already gotten two mid. They got a couple bot. They're getting four top side. Maybe a fifth. You know, I, I feel very blasphemous, the fact that I used to not be on the Grub hype train, like the Dude, first week I'm of LPL when, 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 but no, no team was really using them effectively. Uh, now, seems so well. Here we can see, oh, we don't oh. see anything. <laughs> no, nope, we don't get up. to see it. Keep your eyes closed as uh, now Kanavi might need to keep his eyes closed a little longer. He will be in the day, in the gray screen. And it seems like just overstaying, right? Hoya TPing back in. And they collapse on him, Flandre knowing, yo, buddy, I have no flash. I have I have no ult. Like, you are on your own. And sadly, Kanavi did have enough gold to be able to finish off his first item. Sunder Sky just picked up. Would have been useful, uh, you know, about 20 seconds ago. Ten plates across the map for JDG prior to the 14 minutes. If that's not a gold advantage, I don't know what is. They're almost 3,000 up above TT without even really having to do much besides get some kills, I guess, going their way. We are looking at second items coming across here soon, but the pressure may be shifting towards the top side with Rift Herald up and available. Yeah, for JDG, they're going to feel especially comfortable putting you down that side lane, right? Akali like so just safe being able to push out by yourself. Doesn't have TP for a little bit, so JDG need to be a little bit more cautious on that top side. I guess the question is how, how well their TP timers have been in regards to them knowing that Yukals might be up soon. But they might still have just enough time to take this. They don't know that TT are, you know, nowhere near the area, but they should have a good idea with the subtle vision they have around the Herald. Missing on the roam will secure this one as we look at it. Flandre is the one with the most amount of gold just because of all that influx with the uh, top lane going down. The thing is now he's enabled for a lot of flanks and things like that, which are very, very detrimental to TT and the way they want to play the comp. Ooh, you go. He's going to have to be careful. Flandre has TP and he's nowhere near an area where he's like not safe to, right? It'd be very easy for him to join up right now. But it seems like they're fine giving this up. Flandre makes his way up to top lane. And yeah, a lot of patience out from JDG, which I feel like is what we've come to expect from them once again this split. A little bit of that evolution, I feel like, in gameplay, where uh, I know just a couple years ago, JDG were the team known to go to three games no matter what. They wanted the extra practice, and chaos ensued. Unfortunately, chaos ensues a little bit for Kanavi there as he goes backwards. Still gets the turret, though. That'll be another one down. Yeah, a lot of people... Uh... You know, might think back to JDG of last year where they were really aggressive and in your face, right? But obviously bringing Egal back, getting Flandre up over 369, kind of shifting their style back to more of what it was when Egal was already on the roster. And hell, I mean, Flandre, in terms of how he plays, I mean, he has more interesting picks than Zoom ever did, right? But kind of a guy who you expect to leave to his own devices. A little 1v1 action going on here. Maybe add one in. A little tag team action as uh, here comes the cease and desist. And... Flandre will have to pay attention to that one. But no, this this is what you get Flandre for, right? You pick up Flandre and be like, hey, bro, don't tilt. We're going to let you die as many times as the enemy team wants to kill you, and we're going to do things elsewhere. Can you accept that? Flandre's like, I, I haven't known another life in, in many years. You know, I I haven't been on I haven't been on Snake. Snake hasn't been around for a long time. I'm not playing Malzahar top anymore. Foreshadowing here, I feel like maybe we'll see that ruler. Look, look at the minimap too. Like, yeah. TT are still keeping two members up here to look for a pick. Ooh, ooh, Hoya. In a little bit of trouble. They're going to full commit on a Yagao. Perfect execution used oh. to get out of there. That works out so well because Flandre just TP bot. Luckily, Hoya's yep. TP will be up to try to save this turret, but I don't know if he'll be able to get here in time. 
There it goes. Or down she goes, I guess. Top side still the focus, though. TT will get a trade back of Outer Towers. Opposite sides of the map, though. Navi just being so far forward, hoping that Hoya overcommits. I think Hoya's, I mean, this close to his turret, the fact that he already is Riftmaker Bill, I think it'd be way too overzealous to look for any sort of dive. And it's funny that JDG have been fine to just keep these isolated 1v1s and 2v2s. Ruler peppering 1x in there. They do have a pretty deep flank right now. JDG, they have multiple members collapsing on them. They'll collapse themselves over to Flandre, but here comes Hoya. He's gonna pop that needlework to try to get some slowdown, but Rule is ready for a fight. All five members of TT are here, though, and I don't know if JDG are ready for that one. They don't have Yagao, but he has TP. He has no way but the wave to get there, and here comes Beichuan. He's going through with the tidal wave for missing. They've tried to get the re-engage, potentially, as now Yagao has joined from the TP in lane, and I think TT realized that means their fight is done. I'm a bit surprised that they didn't TP him in on any of these wards that we can see right here, and you have that blank position. Maybe because of how hard it would be to follow up now that Missing's already used his ultimate. Could have made it a lot easier for TT to just turn on Yagao and, and kill him. But you do have Miss to buy time, so... I guess point is, whether it could have happened or not, JDG take the much safer route and just make sure that they don't get collapsed on. We're about to crest over to the 19 minute mark. I do see second item starting to come up, as specifically for Ruler, having completed that rapid fire cannon here. Do we still feel like the uh, skirmish heavy potential of JDG is going to win it out for them, at least in this mid game? Yeah, and I, I think a lot of it comes down to formation between these two comps. Because once he gows in the fight, even if he gows isn't killing anyone necessarily, once Shroud comes down in the middle of a fight, like 1XN especially has to be so scared. You cow too, of course, but at least you have kind of more ways to reposition you have the Emperor's Divide if you need to to get away, but 1XN will just be feeling so much threat. So it all in my mind just comes down to if JDG kind of approach flanks properly, and for TT it's about if they're marking said flanks correctly and, you know, really doing job, doing a good job to sweep behind them and not letting those wards be able to come through. Speaking of wards, some clearing going through from Hoy on the top side, but nothing else to fight over just yet. Baron is coming up, but neither team really set up for that at all in the early parts of the game. Ruler is on a pretty big spike now. Would like to see JDG utilize that in some form. We do have more items coming out, though. Kanik Rooker just picked up for Kanavi. That is an item that people wanted to get nerfed and did end up getting a little bit of a hit. The shield and cooldown on it being touched a little bit. Just Good. a wee bit. Oh. I, there, there's a lot of things that were touched a little bit. Essence Reaver gained five whole AD. I think Varus lost like two base damage. Like just so many small things. Which uh, which is why it might take a while as well for, for teams and players to really figure out what they truly think can work best coming through onto 14-4. Who knows? Maybe it changes nothing. You just keep living <laughs> in, in, in the same plane of existence for months going forward. Hey, you know, sometimes that's how it happens with the patches <laughs> since we've been on 14 for it felt like forever. If we can bring back Zoe and Heimer, then I'm happy to stay there. Ah, uh, wait, really? That's I'm what a, does it for you? I'm a big fan of Zoe just from the fact that typically when she's in the game, that means we're fighting a lot in River early and she's like, yo, give me all your summoner spells. Haha. <laughs> -ha. And uh, Heimer will just always be amusing to me. I'm happy we've started to see him a little bit more. There's never enough Heimer. Never enough, Heimer. You heard it here first. As uh, it is that Frozen Heart second item for Yukao, so definitely going with the trending build right now. Yeah, a lot of obviously a lot of AD on JDG side as well. Going to be able to get uh, the ability haste, which is big. I wonder if he, how much threat he'll put onto Yukao specifically. If we'll see him go with something like the Abyssal Mask next. Obviously not set up for it with the items that he currently has, since he's sitting on the uh, the alternator. But I'm a big fan of Tank Azir. I miss Nasher's Tooth, not gonna lie, but we'll see, we'll see. Uh, 25 seconds for a Dragon. Uh, would be a soul point for JDG. They did just get a reset from Konami, so they can position for it here. We do have IE finally finished up by 1XN. So maybe gonna get a more comfortable point to challenge. But the problem is that if we look at this game holistically so far, JDG haven't really had to come together at all. They've kind of just maintained their side lane presence, looked for picks every now and then with like Yagao or Kanavi roaming. And it's kind of, the ball is in Tiki's court to break that tempo. 
Uh, and we really haven't seen Beitron even even attempt to assist either of his side laners. And I'll just say this is not a team that you necessarily want to go late game against. Uh, there's a reason why they are killers in the LPL, and it's because you get them to a certain amount of time. They were known for the longest time to just close out games if you got past 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, they were that bloodthirsty. Now that same thing now is trying to find a pick by forcing them into river oh they were being so patient i was kind of hoping for td <laughs> that didn't work out just because they were investing so much and trying to figure out a way to break the monotony of this game hoya is starting to get bigger though he's sitting at two items now with the nashers for himself so you're gonna have more side lane presence like we can see but they're really gonna have to be able to turn that into something I love that we're just grouping and, and positioning like we want to fight and just see what we could get here. Ruler going to get an extra ward in the end as teams go back to their graces. It was important to note that JDG now will be on a four-minute timer to get their soul, and it would be a hex soul, too. Pretty big for their comp, I feel like, as well. JDG also. I mean, the fact that they're only sitting at one loss, right? They're still in a great position to finish this split in top two. I mean, hell, them and BLG are the only teams that have one loss. So both their teams' fates kind of being in their own hands. And as we get past the halfway point, it's where playoffs means a lot more, right? And especially top two. I don't think first or second necessarily matters other than, like, pride. But just being able to get that buy into double elim, that's something everyone's going to start hearing us say more. Yeah. JDG right now in front contention with BLG. It's a double-edged sword, though. I think we've also seen a lot of those teams that get the buy end up dropping the first series. It's been so long, it feels like, since they play, but it's definitely something you want. I was going to say, you know, <laughs> I think it doesn't matter, like, how many examples of that you yeah, can yeah, ever yeah. pull. Like, you're never not going to want to buy. It's just so funny how it works out. But, uh, yeah, as you said, it's we're, we're getting pretty far along in this split, and uh, JDG haven't played, uh, I believe, one of the least amount of games in terms of their series played thus far. A lot, lot of ground to make up for themselves, as uh, we do have... A re-imaging of uh, Nayram in the mid lane, but it's uh, in the LPL. So yeah, Page was looking for a cease and desist there. And JDG, I think, the heel. not in the ideal formation they'd want. It's going to be really hard for them to actually walk back into mid now. So I like what TT are doing, trying to cut them off. And Kanavi, he's getting fed up. So he's already looking to find <laughs> That's a way what in. I was going to say. He's just mad. It's, I want to hit somebody. Great job. Great job by TT. Forcing Pryo in mid, able to take away some of this vision, leading back into River. It's not giving JDG an easy avenue. But look at the side lanes. At some point, TT are going to have to move someone over or just accept that gold and experience is going to be lost. And the biggest difference is TT don't have something to fall back on except for their teammates, where JDG, they have front and center a, a really healthy tower for 25-30 in the game. And they have a full item up on Ruler, so they should just be outright out putting more damage at this point in the game. Nothing coming out from this is so interesting, right? JDG pushed out bot, moved towards mid, not able to find a collapse. And again, a lot of that down to, I think, TT being patient, being smart in terms of corralling them in and making them go around. So they are buying more time. I mean, the fact that JDG found a goal lead in this game so early and it's pretty much stagnated ever since is, is, is a decent sign for TT that they can hopefully find their way back in because Mizzell in 1 minute 15 seconds, that's going to be their time to find it. It's going to be a fight waiting to happen for sure. Uh, you might want to be okay with giving up six grubs. I don't think you want to be okay giving up a hex soul no. uh, over to JDG. But I think with the way that position is going to go down, we finally got boots completed there for Ruler as well. I, I, they are definitely an advantage, and TT are going to have to use some of that positioning that you called out to really make it happen. It's going to be even harder now to kill Flandre now that he has that Maw finished up, and right, a big source of TT's damage would be magic from the Gwen and the Azir. And there we go. We do the Abyssal Mask finished up. I realized last time when I commented on it, I then looked at Yigao's items for some reason, but just the Ultra Tank Azir. Coming through a lot of shred with that item too to try and enable even more damage to come out. Big scoop would also make a big difference. We have everyone coming here to the mid lane. We're getting ready for a dragon tussle. 
And again, to me, Yigao is the person to watch, but not for now no. is Kanavi. They don't even wait. They don't even give don't any even time wait. to set up. Ruler went for a trade, and Kanavi said, I got you, bro. As now Yigao shows his face, and they'll find out what this 5v5 has in store. Oh, Ooh. they just they just kill Hoya. He's going to go immune. He's still Gwen, but Yigao gets connected on. That's a really big catch out, though. It's a one for one so far. The Kanavi with that Crescent Guard blocking a ton of damage from 1XN with that distance. They're going to go right onto the dragon. I feel like why we see why they're not waiting for Yigao because he's getting a little bit too hypey. Going in. Great oh, bubble. the bubble connects. New Cal is going to burn his flash. Kanavi, he's over the top of it, but they've already found Beichuan, and Flandre is the one that comes away with it. Give missing his flowers. What an amazing bubble to come through and allow for another pick to come off. This gives Hexel over to JDG. So now not only have they finally furthered their gold lead a bit more, they're going to have all the stats and damage coming out from Hexel. Now they're going to be able to put all of their focus up towards that top side with the Baron. It's been a slow burn, but it's been a burn nonetheless. And TT do not have any fire resistance as JDG just pick them apart. Just going all in with that ult takes a turret shot able to follow through i think that was probably the ace in the hole as well that, that helped get a lot of that damage down on you got but look look at the left hand corner of our screens here it's barret time we're in it to win it right now for jdg hoya's over the edge but big twan is nowhere inside Ooh. missing tanking one for the team there for ruler but it's secured anyways by jdg and without their jungler, they might be in a lot of trouble. TT fight back here on the Kanavi as he's going to burn that Crescent Guard. He's going to go right back in, try to get a kill back on the Toto, but gives his life anyways as Barons of Plenty make it out at least three of them for JDG. TT are going to be happy that they found something, but I think for JDG, you already have Hexel. Now that you have Baron as well, even if a few members went down, it's going to be so huge. Hell, they've been the team playing with double side laners, right? Having both the Aatrox, sure, he's losing to the Gwen and the 1v1, or at least getting pushed in, but also having the Akali. So yeah. they're going to have a lot of options with what they can do and how they can allocate their, their forces. We're going to go into the replay here. I love the call from JDG. Just go straight on the Baron with how strong they are. This ace in the hole does huge damage with the Needlework, yeah, but does. missing is a real one for making sure Ruler doesn't go down. The smite is good from Kanavi. And then again, I think Yigao keeps getting a little bit too hypey on this Akali. <laughs> and Kana Kanavi saying, okay, well, you guys survive. I'll go down for the ship. Don't worry about it. I got you. As uh, Frozen Heart does get completed for Kanavi there as well. Some tanky stats in tow for JDG. I'm going to try to utilize this Baron as best as possible. I said before Gwen was winning in the side lane, but I guess I don't know if I should expect that now that Flandry has the Hexel. I think before earlier he was getting pressured was even before he had the Maw fully completed. Mm. But now Ruler has no fear, but completely that's, believing in missing. That's the thing. When you see this guy play these types of champions, there's a reason why he is above other ADCs. He plays with the line so fluidly. He's able to provide so much pressure from a pick that could literally make the difference if you get caught out or not. And speaking of getting caught out, Yagao gets ceased and desisted by Beichuan, but he's not listening to those orders as he makes it out. Yeah, nice use of the ult there. Ruler! <laughs> the he goes flash. on to 1XN. That's what I'm talking about there. He's flirting with the line of destruction, and Ruler makes it look so, so good. Good thing he can measure it. As bot lane is under siege, mid lane will lose the inhib, and TT are hurting. You said he's flirting with the line of destruction. Are you, are you telling me that Ruler has the Riz Mazel? Is that what you're saying? I'd say he has a lot of Riz. I, I just say it. Uh, when he's on the rift, he's looking real good. As that Lord Doms does come through, fourth item for him. It's been a quiet game for a lot of members of JDG, but it feels also clinical. Exactly, right? That's a good way to put it. They, they've, I mean, a long part of our like early mid game to just mid game overall was, you know, one three one setup. You got pushing, Fondre catching a wave, and then constantly putting in the pressure mid. They were just breaking down turrets one by one, stealing away jungle camps. Uh, very much kind of bringing TT down piece by piece. It was TT who, in that that whole span of like five, ten minutes, weren't really able... They weren't even trying to, to really break the, the kind of flow of the game that JDG had set. Now that flow of the game has uh, maybe spilled over the barriers and into the faces of TT, a series that we all stated, an underdog one, the bottom of our underdog sandwich. 
And uh, it's th it was definitely a tough test. But again, I want to circle back to these series. While it's a tough test, while it's against a very strong opponent, does not mean that they matter any less. TT want to stay in contention for a playoff spot, and that's getting harder to come by. Again, Weibo, who right now are filling that spot, are sitting at 4-4, four and four, which is only two wins above them. It is not an insurmountable task. Sure, you're also obviously betting on you know, a team like Weibo to potentially lose more series as well, but it is not impossible to catch up. JDG might be a bit of a a bit of a high barrier if you have to climb over to, to try and catch up to that. But I mean there there has been some fight back from TP so far in this game, but at this point, Hextech Soul, the, the gold difference, it feels insurmountable. Miguel waiting in the wings up here while Flandre takes the turret. A big push from JDG, even without anything really backing it up, as they actually back away now, seeing Hoya come out of base. Just constantly trying to find angles, right? We're going to get to the point where, where it, I mean, two things will happen, realistically. It's either TT probably slowly bleed out and lose, or you go for the big desperation play, which, you know, we see those end up losing too, but at least it gives you that fighting chance. TT trying to buy as much time as possible to keep getting items under their belts. I think uh, a little saving grace has been Yukal, a little bit of a return to form. I wouldn't say that this is necessarily anything good for TT in this uh, first game of the series itself, but I think on the Azir, we're seeing a return to form for Yukal, but also in a few moments, I feel like, in recent history. Uh, him and Beichuan actually able to connect a little bit better. See if that connection still remains as Kanavi baiting them out from mid lane, ruler on the side. He just doesn't care at all, man. He doesn't, man. He's just walking at him. Oh, is, is ending up having to pay for it a little bit off the damage from you, Cal. But look at the mint map. They're actually still going with the push from Yigao. You have some wards you can TP on to go for a flank, but I wonder if they'll just keep the push going. Thing is, Yigao just cracked open another inhib turret at least. There's the ace in a hole coming out, blocked by missing. The Elder Dragon getting oh so low. Here come Yigao and Flandre. Flandre's gonna be first over. Hits a double Q spot there as well. And here it comes, the tidal wave of pressure. And JDG are just taking them all. That's gonna be a big catch by Yukal at least to separate the fight a little bit. But here comes the TP. Yigao wants to end it. Yigao is going for the throat. And Yukal flashing over. All Flandre wants to do is stop your back, but if he kills you, it doesn't even matter. TP coming out, missing, oh. predicts it over the wall, and beautifully done. TP coming in for Flandre, and that's the end, potentially, by JDG. Yeah, JDG, Yagao, especially in that last fight, finally showing up, and they should be able to look for the end. They're trying to get low on that last gasp effort here for TT, but Hoya doesn't have much left in the tank. Flandre locking them down. The last Nexus Tower goes down at JDG. They are starting off this series mightily strong, and the Titans do retain it. 1-0 to start us off. Great showing by JDG. I mean, again, this was this was an underdog story for TT. Sadly, not able to pull through in game one. It was clinical, it was methodical coming out from JDG, especially in that mid-game where just slowly building up that gold lead. It was uh, an incredible build-up, a little bit of a slow one, I would say, but Kanavi calculated as ever, and JDG themselves very strong-looking. TT on the backs of uh, a very, very triumphant JDG win. Need to pull it back. We'll see if they can in game number two after this break.